Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Andrew O'Leary and I'm going to talk to you about chest pain, uh, largely in the context of being on call and being asked to see someone with chest pain. So we're going to go through how you might want to approach this and you're going to be thinking when you get the phone call from the nurse and she's telling you about the chest pain, you're going to be wondering what's the context. So, well, what did this patient come in with? When did they come in? Have they been having any treatments? Is there something we might have done to them or is, is there a is there something that could be quite obvious that's that's going on? Um, you're going to be thinking, you know, if they're if they're newsing high, you're going to prioritise it quite highly, and you're going to want to go and do an A to E pretty early on, um, especially if they're looking unwell. If, if the nurses, you know, they usually have a good sense of how the patient's been over many hours. So if they're worried, then usually that's a good reason for you to be worried as well. And you know, when you're on the phone. Um, and you're asking for the observations and all the rest of it, chest pain, like a tachycardia, is always a good reason to ask for an ECG. So we're going to get there. We're going to talk about you know, the approach that you take when you take your history and you do your examination, how to direct those, and how to think about which bloods you might want to request when you've seen them, rather than just ordering every possible um, you know, blood test that could could shine some light on, on the thousand reasons for having chest pain and the imaging as well. And always think about, are they anticoagulated? Because of course we give heparin to everyone uh, that we can because inpatient PEs are too common. So when you get to the ward and you're there with the nurse and you're discussing what's been going on, you want to see if there are any concerning features, if, if they've told you or if you've just found out when you got there that they, their observations are very off if they've got low blood pressure, they're very, they've got very fast heart rate, all the rest of it. Um, you're going to want to jump in with an A to E a lot earlier than you would if they're stable, looking comfortable, and there's not much cause for concern. If that's the case, go and read the notes because you, know, you can get a lot of information from the notes. It's going to give you a lot of context. And you know, if they've had five PEs in the past, you can't be sure this is a sixth PE but it's going to certainly help. And then when you come to tell the registrar if you need to escalate it, um, you'll have a lot more information. You'll have the appropriate amount of information to make a, a proper intelligent handover. So yeah, note the medical history, but don't let it tell you what the answer is. And the ECG should also have been done, but unfortunately the nurse won't be as pleased about doing it as this one in the picture is, uh, but it needs to be done either way. So you're going to think systematically as you're doing your history and examination, you're going to have different differentials popping up and down in your head. And of course, the simplest and most obvious thing, uh, things that you're going to revert to are cardiovascular or pulmonary causes of chest pain. So again, it depends on the context and it depends on what you find in your initial history and examination, but and the ECG as well. Um, but you're going to be thinking about ACS. If they've come in with ACS, it could be uh, complications or a repeat episode. If they're very tachycardic, that can be a cause of chest pain in and of itself. Uh, don't forget about very serious, uh, or if, if, even if they are rare things like aortic dissection, if you're a little bit worried about the character and the location of their pain, then get the blood pressure in both arms and try and be nice and thorough about that because that's one thing you definitely don't want to miss. And of course, if it's, you know, if it's not a very severe pain, but it's a bit of a niggle and they've got a new cough and their sats are a bit low and respirates a bit high, then, then you know, that could be a view. But it could also be something a bit simpler and more common, like a pneumonia. And if they've been in for a good few days, they could have a hospital-acquired pneumonia. So you can see how these, uh, all the bits of information will start directing you um, towards um, different diagnoses. And if they've had certain procedures done, you might be worried about a pneumothorax. Um, unlikely if not, um, unless they're just coming into ED. Um, we've also got nice, simple, easy causes that are much less concerning than any of those. So it could be a bit of reflux. Does this feel like the normal pain you get after a big curry and a beer? Uh, well, yes, it does. And if my nephrosol always sorts it out, okay, well, do your other bits as well, but you're most likely dealing with a bit more of that. Um, and muscular pain is very common. Look for point tenderness push on the chest wall and if, if that hurts them here where the chest pain is and it doesn't hurt over here because they can be a bit sensitive as well when they're unwell 
um, and it could just be muscular pain. It could be, um, you know, they, they also could have uh, come in with a fall, for example, a frail old lady and have had rib fractures that haven't been picked up on. And you could go back and look at the, the chest X-ray if it hadn't been looked at by a radiologist or it wasn't very obvious, you might pick up on some rib fractures that need uh, seeing to. And, you know, when you're doing, when you're dealing with chest pain, it, it really is one of those situations where the history and examination um, really will shine a lot of light on what's going on. And with the history, Socrates um, is probably from medical school, one of the things that are, that are actually as useful as it seems like it might be um, in practice. So you're gonna want to do some investigations. Um, these will depend on your initial findings. So uh, as I said, you'll, you'll always have done your ECG and that will tell you if there are any ischemic changes. Uh, look at your S1, Q3, T3. I've only seen it once, but um, it is it is rare, but it's worth, worth looking at. Don't forget that your P is the most common sign is the sinus tachy uh, on the ECG. So don't ignore that either. Um, but when you're thinking about doing your bloods as well, um, you'll have, you know, depending on what you found, you might be thinking of infection, especially the pyrexial, but other things as well. Um, you'll be you'll be thinking maybe there'd be a toss-up between do I do a troponin or a D-dimer. You wouldn't want to necessarily be doing both. Uh, if you look. Uh, over on the right hand side these are all the causes um, the common causes of not just a slightly raised d-dimer but highly raised d-dimers so got surgery well if you're on a surgical ward and you do a d-dimer you can see here that uh, um, that's probably not going to be too distinguishing for you you could possibly do it on the patient in the bed next door and find a higher result um, if, if you're assessing them uh, during your a2e and they're hypoxic just like chest pain reflexively suggests an ECG, that suggests doing an ABG. And if you can call up the reg when, when you've done your assessment and tell them, uh, oh, you know, everything you've done so far, I've got this per person, tell them that you're S bar and I've done my ABG and here it is. And it shows this, uh, that's a lot. You know, it's not about being impressive, but they would be impressed for the reason that you've, you've done a good job um, up until that point. And then, yeah, if you're worried about certain things like infection and in the thorax, uh, then you want a chest x-ray and you can order that and then wait for it and hand, make sure you hand it over. Uh, if they're very, very unwell and you went down the route of uh, being worried enough to ask for other help a lot earlier on, um, often in patients who are that unwell, you're going to want a chest x-ray. Anyway, if there's any element of their breathing uh, that's gone off, uh, call up the radiologists. They won't thank you, but if you tell them it needs to be portable, sorry, uh, they're losing high, then they will come up. Fine. And yeah, th th there is often there are often situations where you can't get a CTPA out of hours, depending on hospitals. And if if that is your number one differential, mention it to the registrar, and you may start treating them overnight um, pending the CTPA. So the overall picture is, or you know, the take home is um, if you're very worried, escalate it. Um, but if you've got time, do all the basics first. Um, if you can say, I've, I've done all of this and, and this is what I found and this is what I think, then you're going to not only have done a better job and save everyone else more work, but you're going to learn quicker and, and progress as a doctor um, earlier on. So yeah, the, the registrar wants to know that they're very busy, but you know, they're, they're at work. They, um, you know, they're meant to be busy, unfortunately. So. You need, to, you need to tell them they want to know about sick patients. They need to know about them because they'd rather know now while they're quite sick than later when they're extremely sick and they, they wish they would have known. Um, make sure that when it comes to the end of the shift, if, if, you know, if you've been doing the evening shift and you've done these, sent off these bloods at 8.30 and you're handing over at 9, they're not going to be back, are they? So uh, you need to make sure you hand those over and, and just keep the chain of communication to whoever's responsible overnight for them. and. Uh, one of the thought, I suppose, is if you do find someone who has ACS, that there is in many hospitals a protocol for um, putting those patients on the cardiology ward round um, so that they're seen pretty much at nine o'clock by a cardiologist who can um, you know, adjust their management most appropriately and, if necessary, put them on, on the list 
for PCI. Of course, if it's a raging STEMI, then they need to go probably for PCI at that time. But any ACS that isn't a massive STEMI, then cardiology ward round. Okay. And I suppose the last point would be just in all these patients that are particularly unwell, check their uh, treatment escalation plan, check it's appropriate, check it's in date, not from five years ago and it's been copied and copied. And if you're very worried and you think they are unstable, um, you can start talking to ITU and see if, if they think they'd be a good, a good candidate, especially a 60 year old bloke who's coming and is having uh, further episodes um, as a consequence of his ACS, they, they will be very interested as opposed to the 95 year old who is uh, unfortunately going downhill. So that's all I've got for you for now.